you know, what exactly is a Christian? All right, so we're gonna talk about this morning. Um, what is a Christian? What is a Christian? Uh, and uh, I think it's very, very vital that we understand what the word means because everybody and their mama these days, especially in America, is calling themselves Christians. So, but what is a Christian? What's the definition of Christian? What does that mean? What does that entail? All right. So, Father God, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Thank you for keeping us, leading us, and guiding us into all truth. Your word, dear Lord, is truth. We bless you and we give you glory and honor and praise. We pray that you give us understanding and wisdom of your word, in your word, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for those that are here this morning. Open their eyes, they may see, in their ears, that they may hear the voice of the good shepherd, the voice of a stranger they would not follow. Put a stirring on the inside of us, O oh Lord, a stirring to know you, to want to know you, to get to know you better. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. So, what is a Christian? All right. What is a Christian? Uh, so, I was listening to a message this 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 past week. I think it was by uh, Derek Prince, and I don't remember what the title was. I don't know. I was on my way to work, and I heard him say something about being a Christian and about being a believer in Christ. And then the thought came to me: you know, What exactly is a Christian? And that thought haven't left me. Um, even I was up at one o'clock this morning, even thinking about it, even mulling over it all week long. What is a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian? But a lot of people call themselves Christians uh, or a Christian, but what does it really mean to be a Christian? So hopefully we answer that question here this morning really quickly. Okay, so, so here's the basic definition that I found online. So in, in, in basic terms, Christian refers to a person or a group of people adhering to the teachings of Jesus Christ. They are in general associated with Christianity, which is the largest and most widespread religion in the world. However, Christians are also the most diffused or means separated or uh, diverse religion uh, with this uh, variety of cultures, okay, with, with a variety of church cultures. So. Um, and uh, so that, that means the word diffuse, that means uh, denomination. There are many different denominations of Christians. And I, I read somewhere this morning uh, that it says that there were 40,000 different denominations of the Christian religion. Um, but here's the thing, though. The thing is this. There can be a different denominational groups of Christians, but as long as as to, to, to be a follower of Christ, you must have uh, some core tenets, some core tenets. And I can't exhaust those core tenets in this one setting, but, I, I'm, but I'm, gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you at least four of them. Uh, I'm gonna give you at least four of them here before the end of this lesson. Okay, so one thing that I found out is that being in different denominations, it's not that bad at all. Mm -hmm. Christian unity uh, doesn't mean that we agree on absolutely everything. And nor, watch this now, does it require us to believe on everything together. For example, some people may believe that God still heals. Some people don't. Some people believe that, believe that God still uses prophets and apostles today. Some people don't. Some believe that the gift of tongues are still present in the church today, and some don't. So listen to what the scripture says in light of that. Romans 14, verse 3 to 6 says, Those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. And those who don't eat certain food must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted them. Who are you to condemn someone else's servant? Their own master would judge whether they stand or fall, and with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. Verse 5 says, in the same way, some think that one day is more holier than another day, while others think that every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced that whatever day you choose to accept, whatever day you choose is, is acceptable. Those who worship the Lord on a special day do it to, uh, to, to honor him. 
those who eat any kind of food do it to honor God, since the Lord gives, uh, since they give thanks to God before eating. And those who refuse to eat certain food also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God. So the apostle is telling us here to not let minute issues, such as the ones I just mentioned in Romans 14, he said, divide the church, the body of Christ. So he is saying, just because one sect of Christians worship God on one day and another sect of Christians worship God on another day, we are still honoring that sect, that those days that we worship to God. In a nutshell, you understand what I'm saying? So, so conclusively, none of those believers or none of those beliefs or unbeliefs will get you into heaven or keep you out. However, there are some false doctrine, if believed in, in spite of the truth in the written word of God, will lead you to hell. What is a false doctrine? A false doctrine is any idea that adds to, takes away from, contradicts, or nullifies the doctrine um, given in God's word. For example, any teaching about Jesus that denies his virgin birth is a false doctrine because it contradicts the clear teaching of scripture. So a false doctrine is any doctrine or any teaching that contradicts the clear teaching of the scripture. I'm going somewhere. Hang in there. So however, the question then remains at large, what is a Christian? Possibly here is where the dividing line begins. Because understand this, that the majority of people who live in America call themselves Christians. We even call this or used to call this a Christian nation. But if we look at the teachings of Christ and look at how we as, as a people conduct ourselves in America, can we literally say that we are a Christian nation or can we literally say that most of the people who live in America are called Christians? Now, you can call yourself a Christian. That doesn't mean that you are a Christian. But now I want to show you the end of the word of God that Jesus, or you can search the word of God, Jesus never called any of us Christians. He says, you are my disciples. He even calls us his brothers and sisters, and he even calls us his friends. You are my friend. Or in other words, well, but, well let me go back to that. Those are terms of endearment, but let me go back. So those that follow Jesus, and I'm going to show it to you in a minute, he called us disciples. He never called us Christians. In fact, I want to show you here in a little bit that the word Christian was not derived from the Holy Spirit or from God or from the Lord Jesus Christ, but it was given by man. And watch this. And most of the history teaches us that um, this word was not given by a Christian man. It was given by an unbeliever. Uh, it was given by an unbeliever. Let me show you this. So, however, the question still remains at large. What is a Christian? Possibly here is where the dividing line begins. And it was at Antioch, the Bible says in Acts chapter 11, verse 26. It was at Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. Acts chapter 11, verse number 26. So, all right, watch this. The term Christian was almost certainly invented by a non-Christian Gentile and was used to mean those who imitated or supported Jesus Christ. To some extent, this made the term Christian an expression of sarcasm and mockery. So Peter hints at it in his writing in 1, 1 Peter 4 and 16, when he was telling people, he said, don't, don't be ashamed to be called a Christian. So, in, so in, um, in the beginning, the term Christian was used as an expression to mock God's people. It was not a celebrated term or a term of endearment or a term to be honored at the time. It was used to mock the people of God. Now watch this now. It will take a long time before the label Christian passed from insult to identification. Typically, believers in the New Testament used the words like disciples, saints, or brothers. They didn't use the term Christian. And like I said before, you nowhere know in the Word of God will you find that Jesus calls us a Christian. 
Okay, in this sense, we should honor the title because, or label because in the beginning, they thought that the term would bring insults to God's people and shame to the name of Jesus Christ. But in retrospect, it is a label that has become one of the most identified titles given to a people. So what the enemy has meant for evil, God turned it around for his good. Isn't that something? That's something right there to me. Um, I, I just enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Watch this. To be a Christian means that I identify with and follow the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ is not his last name. It is who he is. It means the Messiah. So Christian means I am of the Messiah the anointed one. So Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He said, in, in essence, he's saying, follow me as I follow the anointed one, the chosen one, the son of God. So John 8 and 31 says this. He says, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful in my teachings. So let's look at this real quick. So what are the, what are some of the tenets of the teachings of the Lord? And this is not all in this is not all in the in, in the least of the word. This is not all. I, I just I just four four thoughts came to me this morning while I was putting this lesson together. Four things came to me. So what 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 are some of the tenets? What are some of the doctrines of the belief uh, of the teaching of the Lord that he said that we should remain faithful in? One of them is love. Mark 12, verse 30, verse 31. Listen to what he says here. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And he said, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Then he says, there is no commandment greater than these. There's no commandment greater than these. I'm going to read that again. Mark 12, verse 30 and 31 says, love the Lord your God. So like I said, one of the first tenets is love. He said, this is the greatest commandment. This is the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. So there's no commandment greater than love. Now watch this. If you love, everything else will fall into place as far as obeying the word of God. Now, that's the first commandment. The second, uh, the, the, the second tenet is forgiveness. Isn't that something? You have to forgive. You got to be a person of uh, with a forgiving heart. The, this is the this is what the word of God says that David was a man after God's own heart because he was a, a person of forgiveness and he was a person of repentance. Watch this now. Listen, all the things that Saul attempted to do to David in, in the book of first, first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, all the things that Saul uh, that attempted to do of first, second Kings attempted to do to David, David still forgave him. Even they uh, saw taking the opportunity to throw a javelin at David and the javelin stuck in the wall next to him and David fled, but yet David was willing to forgive. One of the reasons I believe that David was so willing to forgive because he knew his own sins. He knew the sins that he committed to God. In Psalm 51, he'll tell you, he knew the sins of his uh, of his life. And he, if he wanted God to f forgive him, he knew, he knew that he had to be a forgiving person. Same, so likewise as uh, to us, if we want God to forgive us, we have to be a people of forgiveness. Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15 says, for, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Isn't that amazing? So God says, if you want me to forgive you, you have to forgive other people. If you don't forgive other people, I will not forgive you. Even says in the Lord's Prayer, uh, um, give us the idea of it. Forgive us our sin. Forgive us. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against against us. So you literally, when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you literally saying to God, "Forgive me as I forgive." If I don't forgive God, you have the right not to forgive me. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Now, the, the, the third thing, the third thing here is prayer. So number one, a person of love. Number two, a person of forgiveness. Number three, a person of prayer. 
you have to be a person of prayer in order to be a qualified follower disciple of jesus christ why do i know that why do i say that because the scripture tells me watch what the scripture says in matthew 6 verse number 9. jesus said to his disciples in this way pray and then he said in mark 11 verse 24 when you pray so it is expected uh, uh of those who follow the messiah to pray who follow jesus to pray he didn't say if you pray he didn't say when you if you feel like praying pray like this he said when you pray again so there's an expectation that the lord has for those who he called his disciples to be a person or people of prayer a people of prayer all right so first love number two forgiveness number three prayer number four a person who lives by faith a person who lives by faith hebrews 11 verse 6 says um uh living by faith means that we trust in the living in, in the written word of god and we apply it hold on hebrews 11 and 6 says for um for those that come to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so seeking god is faith now listen to this right here he said without faith it is impossible to please god for those that come to him must believe him you must believe that he is and he is a rewarder he rewards those who diligently seek him you cannot have the word faith without having the word diligence in uh, uh in it diligence describes or is an adjective of faith so so if he says that we must live by faith it means that we must trust the written word of God and apply it to our lives daily. For the word of God also says that my righteous ones shall live by faith. Of course, the King James Version says the just shall walk by faith. But the, the translation of that, I think the New Living Translation says, the my righteous ones, those whom I've called righteous, those whom I've, who I've made righteous, they shall walk or live by faith. So a Christian is one who follow and obey the teachings of the anointed one, the Lord Jesus Christ. At least by this, at least by this, this is the least of it. And, uh, you know, the, the, these teachings build upon, uh, 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 build upon the other. So I can come next week and, and, and build upon this same teaching. So, so what's this? So a Christian is one who follow and obey the teaching of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, at least by love loving the lord to a god with all your heart your soul your strength and love your neighbor as yourself forgiveness forgiving others as god uh as you want god to forgive you prayer development developing a dynamic and strong prayer life because he said when you pray it is expected of christians to pray of believers to pray disciples to pray and and living by faith believing in the word of god believing in the word of God and applying it to our life. That's living by faith. So then, so then, is it safe to say, is it safe to say that those who don't follow his teaching and continue in his word are not Christians? Let me, let me rephrase that. I pose it as a question, a question first, but let me rephrase it as a statement. So it is safe to say that those who don't follow his teaching and continue in his word are not Christians, okay? Are not Christians or, or believers or disciples. So another point here is you can be a Christian by name and title alone and your actions don't reflect it. That then is the dividing line. Some are only Christian by name and title and the other are Christian because of how they live. The latter is most important because he said he did not say, if you say that you are a Christian, you are my disciples indeed. But he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Watch this. If you continue in my word, you are my or, or you are my disciples. Or if you remain faithful in my teaching, then you are truly my disciples. That's what Jesus said. He defined what we say Christians and what, he, what, what, what uh, a Christian is. But like I said before, he never calls us a Christian. He calls us disciples, disciples 
uh, from the word discipline, one who follows the teachings of Christ, one who applies the teachings of Christ to his life. Then I'm wondering then if the, 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 the issue is why don't we see the miracles that are that, that, that are written in, in in the early church as uh, why don't we see them today um uh, on the same level because the bible says this that jesus mark mark chapter 16 that jesus worked with his disciples when they went to preach the gospel with signs following his disciples not his christians his disciples those who followed him those who applied the, their the teaching to the now am i saying that we got to be absolutely and totally perfect no it is a work in progress it, you, it's something that you should be working toward on a daily basis of uh, of becoming and being a disciple of jesus christ amen and amen Father God, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for keeping us, leading us, and guiding us into all truth. Your word, dear Lord, is truth. I bless you and I magnify your holy name for you are glorious, you are gracious, you are wonderful. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love, and your kindness. Thank you for revelation, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you for wisdom this morning in Jesus' name. I pray for these, your people, and I ask you, oh God, to bless them and keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. I ask that you give them wisdom. I ask you, oh, oh God, that you touch their hearts, that they may receive you in the name of Jesus. I, pray, I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives today. God, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every time that survives against them, the judgment shall be condemned in Jesus' name. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.